Good day, everyone. Welcome to our class. How's your day? Fine? That's good. How about our students who's joining us online? I hope you're all doing well and healthy. Take notes if you like, and if you have any questions and queries, just comment in the chat box and we will cater that later on. So before anything else, I'd request everyone to stand off for a prayer. Dear Lord and Father of all, thank you for today. Thank you for ways in which you provide for us all. For your protection and love, we thank you. Help us to focus our hearts and minds now on what we are about to learn. Inspire us by your Holy Spirit as we listen and write. Guide us by your eternal light as we discover more about the world around us. Bless us, Father, with your wisdom as we begin our class. We ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so good day again, everyone. I am Princess Lini Fabillar, or you can call me Teacher Princess. And with me is Miss Edlyn Ginayas, or Teacher Edlyn, who will be joining us later on. Okay. Ooh, I can sense that some are still a bit sleepy, so I guess we have to do a bit of stretching. Yeah. So I'd be requesting everyone to stand up. Stand up. Whoops. To our students. Who's joining us online, you are not accepted. Kindly turn on your camera so that I can see you. Okay, that's better. Okay, stand up now. Okay. So, I bet you all know the song. I'm alive, alert, awake, enthusiastic. Okay, everybody now. I'm alive, alert, awake, enthusiastic. I'm alive, alert, awake, enthusiastic. I'm alive, alert, awake. I'm alive, alert, awake, enthusiastic. Faster! I'm alive, alert, awake, enthusiastic. I'm alive, alert, awake, enthusiastic. I'm alive, alert, awake, awake, alert, alive. I'm alive, alert, awake, enthusiastic. Yay! That's good! Okay, take your seats now. Okay, so let's start with uh, our roll call. So let's check, let's check your attendance first. To our students uh, who's attending uh, who's attending us online, just comment your name in the chat box so that I can tag you present in today's session. Okay, so let's start. Mr. Amanti Ajunel, present. Aspaki Bruce. Okay. Canaster Ken. Catalan Freddy. Katubay Kim. Juan and Kirk. Pimentel John. Ponce Johnard. Kenyanola Gary. Wow, all boys are present. I hope so, the girls are also. Abria Bina. Aspera Rena. Don Dorothy. Dalai Christine Bartelano Clarice Evelyn Lumasay Macias Bella Flora Sabilio Villa Gracia May Wow, I can sense that Everyone is really enthusiastic for today's lesson since everyone is present. Let's give each other a round of applause, guys. Nice. Okay, so let's begin our lesson. I'll be showing you one picture and you will tell me what can you see in the picture. So is the picture clear? Okay, good. So what can you see in the picture? Yes, Kent. Oh, a tree. Yes, a tree. Aside from the tree, what can you see in the picture? Yes, May? Yes, they had a, a lion and a monkey. Okay, so both Kent and May mentioned are correct. So, why are you seeing two things in this image? Okay, so it's because our minds perceive things. Our minds perceive figures. You know, and our mind followed certain principle of perception, which will be our topic today, the gestalt psychology. So, gestalt psychology. 
The term just felt means form or configuration. The way things has been placed or put together. Just felt psychology believes that all objects and scenes can be observed in the simplest form. So this theory was devised by a group of German psychologists, which is Max Wurlinger, Wolfgang Fuller, and Kurt Kafka. Uh, they actually explore how we perceive the world around us. We can create compelling images that draw in and hold the viewer, just like the photo I've uh, shown earlier. So remember, as we go through these principles, remember that when we view an image, we're not at all lazy. Humans are actually more interested in an image if they have to work a little. Do you agree with me? Yeah, because I can also relate to that. Not too much mind because that's what this is all about, making it easy for the viewer to figure out the image. But if the viewer has to work a little to fill in the gaps of what they see, they're more engaged in the image. And so I will present to you the six Just Talk principles and I will just give you some the, the gist of the principles. So let's start with first the law of proximity. These objects that are that are near each other are perceived as belonging together. The second is the law of similarity. Our eyes group together similar elements. The third one is the law of closure. Our brains fill in the gaps. The fourth one is the law of good continuation. So the viewer's eyes are taken beyond the subject and continue through the image. The fifth one is the law of provenance or the law of symmetry and order, which is made up of exactly similar parts and reduced to simplest form. The sixth one is the law of figure and ground, which differentiate the subject from the background. Okay, so uh, I will assign you into uh, six groups and each group will be provided with a photo uh, of one of the Just Talk principles. So I will give you 10 minutes to study and discuss it with your group and present in front. So uh, in your own creative way. So go now to your respective groups. I mean, you have to count first. You, you have to group yourselves first into one to six. Okay, start. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Okay, now so you have to go now to your respective groups. It's now 10.30. So I'll just give you 10 minutes. So by 10.40, you will now begin presenting your uh, assigned principle. Okay, so here's your photo. The students are now in their group discussing on their assigned gestalt principle. Okay, time is up. Group one, it's now your uh, it's now your time to present your assigned gestalt principle. Very good. Okay, group two. Very good. Group four. Let's give them a round of applause. Okay, group five. Okay, another barangay club. Group six. Very good. Okay, thank you, guys. So, wow. Everyone, I mean, all of the groups have a comprehensive presentation of each of the principal. Okay, so let's review the answers of each group, simplifying and uh, try to observe every detail. Okay, so let's first start with the law of proximity. So what does, what does the gist of law of proximity is? Objects that are near each other are perceived as belonging together. 
Okay, so our brain wants to reduce confusion and chaos. So they group objects that are near together as one that's what, as, as one unit rather than seeing them as individual objects. So as you can see in this picture, there are actually uh, white circles and black circles. So this whole uh, picture, you can perceive it as one unit. But if you'll actually question that they can be uh, not considered as one unit since there are uh, block circles uh, alternately in between the white circles. So you can actually perceive these white circles as one unit, also these black circles as one unit, but since they are of the same shapes, they doesn't, uh, the color doesn't matter. So you can, so there are three things you can do. You can perceive this white as one unit, the black one as one unit, but you can also perceive this whole image as one unit. So let's give the group one a barangay club. <laughs> Very good group one. Okay, so let's proceed with the group two, which is the law of similarity. So the gist of law of similarity is our eyes group together similar elements. So we see objects that are similar in shape, size, color, and texture as belonging together. You know, according to just a theory, this is our brain simplifying the parts of the image to make it easier to read. So, what is just about psychology? It believes that all objects and scenes can be observed in the simplest form. So, in this picture, what can you see? The diamond shape consisting of the circles. So, this triangle here doesn't actually, I mean, you, you might it doesn't matter anymore because you will just directly pinpoint that the circles are into shape of a diamond. And so, let's proceed with the law of closure, which is a soccer ball. So, law of closure states that our brain will complete shapes that doesn't actually exist. So we didn't need to have all the information to understand the image. So in fact, our brains like to work a little to complete the image. More on enclosing a space and ignoring the gaps of the figure. That's why we actually um, perceive this image as a soccer ball. So as you can see, there are gaps. There are no lines connecting the block colors. But we can actually directly say that this is a soccer ball. Because what is the gist of the law of closure? Our brains fill in the gaps. So that easy. So the fourth one is the law of good continuation. The viewer's eyes are taken beyond the subject and continue through the image. Just like this one. So remember my point earlier about the viewer use, uh, you seem to have a work a little when viewing an image. This law is... One example. So as explained by group 4, there is a curve and a horizontal line that interacts each other. So even they differ in color, there's a, uh, there's a good continuation in it. So that's, that's how simple it is. So group, I mean the fifth law, which is the law of pregnancy or the law of symmetry and order. So this is made up of exactly similar parts and reduced to simplest form. So what can you see in the picture? Five rings. You will directly say five rings that is interconnected. But the small sphere shape here doesn't matter because directly your mind and your eyes can perceive the five rings. So that's what the law of pregnancy is. So the sixth law is the law of figure and ground. So this differentiate the subject from the background. So the law of figure and ground, well, this is not as complicated as it sounds. An image has two parts, the figure and the ground. So the figure is the subject and the ground is the background and um, or the, the foreground of the image and uh, the rest of the image. So the figure in this picture is the vase or I mean the, the candle holder. But in the background, you can also see that there are two faces 
facing each other. Two images of faces facing each other. So, this is the figure and this is the background. So, you know, it's really nice. I mean, that's how wonderful our mind works. So, I guess that ends my uh, explanation about the principles of digital psychology. Now, for the insights and learnings of uh, Life Space by Lewin, this will be discussed by Ms. Edlyn Pinayas or Teacher Edlyn. So, Teacher Edlyn, take the floor. Good morning, class. As the continuation for the topic, who have an idea about insight learning? Anyone? From the word insight. Anyone, class? Okay. If you want to answer, just raise your right hand. Yes, Bella. Very good. Who else? Yes, Kim. Very good. Yes, Gary. Very good. Okay, class. Our topic this morning is about insight learning. Insight learning adheres the idea of learning taking place by discovery or insight. Insight learning involves our brain that helps to develop a solution to solve a problem. The idea of insight learning was first developed by Wolfgang Kohler, in which he described an experiment with an apes where he could use boxes and steak as a tools to solve a problem. So Kohler only saw only one of Kohler apes can solve his problem by using the boxes and the steak. So the important aspect of learning was not reinforcement but the coordination of thinking to create new organization. Kohler referred this as behavioral insight or discovery learning. So class, do you have any question about insight learning? None? No question? Okay, if none, before I proceed to our next topic, let me first test your learning skills, okay? I have a question here and for you class to answer. Question number one. Who first developed the idea of insight learning? Anyone? Okay, class, if you want to answer, just raise your right hand. Yes, Dina. Very good. Question number two. What are the tools that the apes use to solve the problem? Anyone? Yes, John. Very good. Now, class, that you already know about Insight learning, let's proceed to our next topic. Our next topic is about just talk principles and the teaching learning process. Just the six just talk principles was not only influence perception but rather the impact on learning. So, according to what Kurt Lewin, who expounded the just talk psychology, his theory is focusing in life space. He said, an, indi an individual has an inner and outer forces that, af that affects his perception and also his learning. So, the inner forces may include his motivation, attitude, and feelings. While outer forces may include the attitude and the behavior of a teachers and classmates. So, Mario Polito was an Italian psychologist who writes the relevance of gestural psychology on education. So, class, do you have any question about gestural principles and the teaching learning process? None? No question? Okay. Now that you have no question, let me test again your learning skills. So, here's the question, class, and for you to answer. So, question number one. Who's the Italian psychologist writes the relevance of just all psychology to education? Who was that? Okay, class, don't forget that if you want to answer, just raise your right hand. Yes, me. Very good. Okay, question number two. In what theory of court living is focusing in? Yes, anyone? Yes, Bea. Very good. Question number three. Who expounded the just told psychology? Who was that? Anyone from the class? 
Yes, Kim. Very good. Now, class, that you already know about insight learning and the uh, just talk principles and the teaching learning process, let's now proceed to our activity. So, the mechanics of our activity is brain me. So, I will going to group you by three, then each group will, will assign in any way, different ways on picking a mango. So, by start out, so let's start our activity. So, count off one, two, three. Okay, start one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, all group one will be here, followed by the group two and the group three. So, group one will use a stake in picking a mango, while group two, you are going to climb the mango tree and group 3 any object that can be used by throwing or dating a mango so after the activity I am going to give you 10 minutes to less done all the difficulties that you learned during the during our activity so your 10 minutes start now So, in our generalization, I am going to use the same group and the mechanics of our game is a message relay. So, before we start our game, I am going to, or activity, I am going to use the same group. So, group one, so group one form a line here, followed by the group two and the group three. So, the last person of the group will rest, well, write the answer of his or her groupmates. The first person of the group whispered to the second person answering the question, who, who was first developed the idea of insight learning? So, the second person whispered to the third person 
and tell the all the group will answer. So the last person in the group will write down the answer in the unique way. Okay. Now group one, group two, are you are you ready? Okay. So please pass your activity paper. So, very good. Group 1, group 2, group 3. Okay. Now that we are done in our generalization, Mom Princess Lynn will make an instruction about your evaluation and also your assignment. But before, uh, but before class, I am going to take my seat. I am, uh, I want to say thank you and thank you for listening and participating. Thank you for the insights, Teacher Edlin. So to test if you really learned from our lesson, get one half sheet of paper. To our students attending online, I will send a link to our group and kindly submit it within the day. Okay, so are you all ready? Okay, let's start. Question number one. Enumerate the six principles of gestalt psychology. Again, Enumerate the six principles of just thought psychology. Okay, number two. Name the three psychologists who introduced just thought psychology. Name the three psychologists who introduced just thought psychology. Okay, number three. The just thought law that explains that our brain experiences visual line of elements that are grouped together. Again, the just thought law that explains that our brain experiences visual line of elements that are grouped together. Okay, number four. The term just thought means. Again, the term just thought means. Okay, last number. Number five. Who expounded just thought psychology that focused his theory on life space? Again, who expound just thought psychology that focused his theory on life space? Okay, opens up. Submit your papers in front, please. Thank you. Okay, so um, I will check this paper and get this. I'll give this back to you in our next session. Okay, since time is nearly up for your assignment, kindly write this in your notebook, please. Okay, uh, in a paragraph form, explain the importance of just thought psychology and how can you apply or use it in your personal life. Again, in a paragraph form, explain the importance of just thought psychology and how can you apply or use it in your personal life. Okay, so, uh, so you will submit that in our next session. So kindly all stand up for a closing prayer. Okay, let's all bow down our heads and let's pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the success and the wonderful day that you have given each and one of us, as well as the knowledge of wisdom. Forgive all of our sins. This is all we ask in the loving name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, so that ends our class. Thank you, everyone, and uh, have a safe trip going home. Bye-bye.